If you're anything like me, you might have a lot of different ways to organize your life, but I find that using a bullet journal is really, really helpful for me. So I'm going to show you my bullet journal setup for the year 2021, and I'm actually just going to be using this very simple dotted journal notebook that I got from, I think like Michael's or something like that. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to prove to you that you don't really need a very fancy notebook to bullet journal. I got this notebook for $6 some years ago, and it really doesn't matter which notebook you use if you just want to get started and give it a shot. If you want a really high quality notebook, I definitely understand why, being that some bullet journals like this one have a tendency to bleed through to the next page, or maybe just won't hold together as perfectly as other ones, but I still think that they're pretty great. And over here I just did my cover page. And and moving on, I have a title page. Normally I really don't fill these in and I want to be better about that this year because in the past when I've done bullet journaling, I find that there are so many pages left over that I don't ever fill in with anything. And I think it would be nice to try to have more of a filled in journal this year to actually be able to talk about the things that I was interested in at the time or draw different things to kind of show how my skills have improved or just generally to be able to put my thoughts out there without thinking too hard about if it's going to be aesthetically beautiful, which again is kind of why I picked this notebook. I do have other notebooks to pick from, but again, kind of proving a point here. Uh, although if you wait a minute, when I turn to the next page, you're going to see that it does bleed through a little bit. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be perfect, but that's not really the point of bullet journaling. I think if you have these aesthetic bullet journals on Instagram or YouTube, it's very easy to get caught up and think that it has to be absolutely perfect, but definitely doesn't have to if you just want to use it for utility. These are some really cute washi tapes that I found online that I was using, and I honestly am not sure where I got all of my washi tape, but I will say you can pretty much find all of the washi tape that you need on AliExpress for really, really cheap. Over here, I have a grid spacing guide that I set up. A lot of people have been using this, and I have never used this before in my life, but this is from Amanda Rach Lee's bullet journals. She is the bullet journal queen on YouTube, so if you ever want to get started with bullet journaling, she is definitely one of the first people that you want to check out, and she has set up this grid spacing guide as a way to help you figure out how best to split up your spreads without having to count all of the squares every single time. For me, I have a bullet journal that is 27 by 39 spaces so that's what I kept in mind while I kind of split everything up myself. On the right side I have a quote from High School Musical. It says this could be the start of something new. I really don't do quote pages very often. There aren't really that many quotes that speak to me too much that I need to include them but I thought this would be a nice way to show off that we're starting off the new year. Uh, yeah, I know when this video is coming out. It's not coming out in January, but that's okay. This video, to be honest, took so long to film, but I was pretty happy with how these pages came out, even though I think the grid spacing was a little bit all over the place with all the colors. I thought it was still fine. I don't always fill out my table of contents, but I thought it would be useful to have an index because I have used it in the past to tell exactly what it is that I'm looking at being that sometimes I don't remember to fill in everything that I want to at the beginning of the bullet journal, so that way if there are any other additional spreads that I want to come back to at any point in the year, I can figure out where they are. You'll see now that I am actually using my grid spacing guide to make a Dutch door, and a Dutch door is basically something that you can make so that way part of the spread is visible. So I made this Dutch door basically so that way I could see the 2021 log on both sides and I thought it would be nice to actually have this log so that way I could see exactly what I'm going to be up to if I have any readathons that I want to plan or if I have birthdays that I need to keep track of. I can definitely look it back at this calendar and see all of that. I made a bunch of mini calendars using this stamp set so that way I could pretty quickly make all the calendars because writing out the calendars means I'm gonna make a mistake. Although you'll see, I make a mistake anyway. For me, I tend to just accept that I'm going to make mistakes all the time. 
and I just cut out a little piece in the back of the bullet journal uh, to basically cover up any of the mistakes that I make so that way it still looks like it has that dotted grid, it's the same color. So I just went in and I labeled all of them from January to December and you'll see that the May one is the one that I kind of messed up on but that's okay. I didn't really fill in all of the different events that are going on but I'll be filling this out throughout the year. Moving on to the next page, I actually don't know what happened, but I lost all the footage for this. But I kind of copied what Sid from Sid Bookworm did, and she had drawn out these really cute boxes and colored them in with different colors and wrote out the months. And this basically would be a way for me to write down the things that happen to me every month that I think are worth remembering and that I might want to go back to at some point without having to actually flip through every single month and see every single moment. So I made each of them a different color based on potential themes that I may want to stick to, although I'm not really going to hold myself to definitely sticking to those themes. And once again, I lost more footage, so let's just ignore that. So for the reading goals on the left side, I decided to separate that out from my regular goals, and I made each one the same color as the months that I had drawn on the previous page for the memorable moments. This is not really supposed to be that each of these months I'm going to accomplish these goals, but I think it would be helpful to to look back every single month and say, did I accomplish this goal yet? Am I at least working towards it? And if the answer is yes, then I would feel pretty satisfied that I'm going to complete it by the end of the year. So some of the goals that I have here are things like finishing the series that I've started or the books that I actually own off of my TBR, uh, hosting a readathon, and trying out different genres. I also want to make more time for videos to actually give you guys some more content out there because I have a lot of ideas, but they just don't always get out there in time. I also really want to make bullet journal videos and I've already accomplished that goal now by making one, but I definitely want to get you guys a little bit more so you can see what sort of things that I'm putting into my bullet journal. And the last one that I have is 1k plus subscribers energy, which is basically just saying instead of having this impression that I need to have 1000 subscribers to do all the things that I want to do, like a Q&A or other such videos, I can just do them now and there's no reason that I really have to wait to get to that subscriber goal to have the kind of hot energy that I want to have. For the 2021 goals side, I have things like cleaning my room and donating my clothes. These are just things that I need to get done in general, but they're not really related to reading. But I wanted to keep my goals within reach so that it doesn't really feel impossible to accomplish any of these goals. And some of these goals are fun things like using a bath bomb or playing video games. Moving on, I have a TV series page. This is just a way for me to track which TV shows that I am watching and what episode that I'm on to. This is a page that I think exists in a lot of people's bullet journal spreads but I kind of added on something that I have been doing in the past, which is basically that I will write out the name of the show and I will usually leave the season number blank and I'll just write it in in pencil instead. And if there are additional episodes in different seasons, then I'll be sure to only put in the episodes that exist in every single season in pen and then all the additional ones in pencil. That way, as I move on from season to season, I can still keep an accurate log of what I'm reading. And when I move on to the next season, I can basically just erase everything that I have already filled in to say which episode I'm on and start from scratch without having to remake all of the different boxes for every single season. I hope that's not too confusing. Some of the series that I want to watch are Bridgerton, which I have been very interested in ever since learning about the possible Bridgerton musical that might be happening based on what has been going on on TikTok from Abigail Barlow and Emily Bear, which is really cool and you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. I also want to try out different TV shows like Schitt's Creek and also want to revisit some other ones like The Office and Parks and Rec, which I never really finished, but have always been really, really fun and I want to get back to them. I also made a spread for the movies that I want to watch. This is basically just a TV that I drew and I wrote the word movies over it and I'm just making a box for all of the different movies that I want to watch and the name of the movie right next to it so I can just check it off. If you have any movie suggestions that you think I should watch, definitely let me know because I don't really watch that many classic movies so I definitely want to watch some of those better renowned 
ones that you think everybody should watch. I then made this recipes spread. I thought this would be a cute way to track which recipes that I make throughout the year because I always want to improve my cooking and try out different things that I've never made before, but I don't really write them down anywhere. I don't know for sure that I will actually write out the whole recipe because I think that would probably take up the whole spread, but it would be a nice way to just get a sense of what kind of things that I'm cooking. I added on this cute washi tape that I found that has all these different food items on the bottom. They're mostly like fruits and vegetables and I thought it would be a cute touch. Moving on, I have the books to read spread. This is what you all came for, right? Okay. This is where I made all the bookshelves that everybody seems to be making in their bullet journals these days. For the books that I put directly under the words 2021 and books, I wanted to kind of make them look like staggered books that were lying on top of each other because I had written the words up so high. Uh, you'll see on the book side that that came out exactly the way that I wanted it to, but on the 2021 side, not so much because I went to go make the diagonal books, but I made them look kind of weird. So I actually ended up turning that one into an open book, which kind of works out. I guess this is sort of one of those things that you bullet journal for a while and you make some happy accidents and you try to make it look fine. And sometimes that's the fun of it because if everything was perfect, we would never see everything that could be. Then I went ahead and I made all these other shelves. It was really fun to actually make all the books here and it was a good way to actually listen to some audiobooks while I got these spreads done. I was listening to Empire of Gold while I was working on this and I was shocked and disturbed by the fight scenes that were going on near the end of the book. So that is really what I remember most vividly whenever I look at this spread. I thought it would also be cute to add in some plants and additional features that would be hanging around on the bookshelf so that way I didn't have to draw like 400 books, which I'm definitely not going to be reading in 2021. I have an unofficial kind of goal in 2021 to not really read a certain number of books, but I do think since last year I read over 250 books that I could probably read about the same again. Um, I don't exactly remember how many books are actually on these shelves after I drew all of them, but I definitely think it's more than 250, which, uh, I don't know how I feel about. Maybe it'll actually push me to keep reading more and more. I don't think holding yourself to a specific number for your reading goals is necessarily the best way to go about it. I think if you need to generally read more, it might be useful, but for a person who's already an avid reader, I already know that I'm going to keep reading a lot. So I think it's more useful for me to actually read the books that I actually want to read rather than just reach a goal. I really like participating in readathons and I'm definitely going to continue doing stuff like that. But as far as the actual reading itself for a certain number, I don't think that matters that much to me anyway. As much as I say that, I already read about 31 books and now it's February, so I don't even know if what I'm saying even matters at this point because I just read like a monster. I do want to apologize because the camera just started flying around by itself and I have no idea what was going on with that but I guess that's what I get for not having a very secure setup when I was trying to film this and I liked adding in these little features I added in another little book stand and a little plant I also added in a bottle and a little elephant elephants are my favorite animal ever since I watched Dumbo and cried like a baby on the plane I don't know why I literally fell asleep watching Dumbo but he was so cute that I cried a lot so that's why I like elephants and I had to include one on my shelf and I added a note that says I am once again asking you to read the last thing on this page is to add in what all of the colors will mean. So instead of tracking audio, physical, ebook, etc., I actually just wanted to track how many stars I gave each book and track the colors based on that. So for a five star book, I'm giving it this kind of greenish color, four stars this teal, three stars a yellow, two stars purple, and one star is gray. I also have uh, this kind of like muted brown color for unrated books. I don't think the colors come across that well, but that's what I wanted to put for each of them. And then I would just write the name of of the book on the spine in white.
So once again, you'll see that, yeah, you can bullet journal in any book, but should you? I don't know, this is a decision you should make, but you'll see that what I wrote on the previous page, all those shells that I made kind of bled through to the next page. And there's not a whole lot that I could do about that without just pasting an entire piece of paper on top of it. So it's fine by me, but also maybe it's not because you're watching this video and you expected some aesthetic takes. So sorry about that. I decided to add in this recommendations page. I just really wanted to make this kind of loading screen theme for this page. I added in everything that kind of looked like different computer screens with different tabs. And this way I could kind of track the different things that people recommend to me as far as the books that they want me to read or movies or other things that I can't really fit onto the other TV show, movies, books, etc. pages. If there's just anything in general that people want to recommend to me, then I can keep track of that over here. It was really fun to draw in things like the search bar and what each of these little arrows back and forth and home page and stuff would look like for this page. It's just a cute way to actually bring things from online back into the real world. You know, I'm recording this voiceover and yeah, it's kind of really bothering me how bad this looked, which is probably why I decided to paste in this piece of paper from the back of the bullet journal because that way I don't have to look at it as much. Uh, some of these are less offensive than others, I think, because the ones that are right on top is where I wanted to color stuff in, and if I could just see the previous page, doesn't look so good, doesn't look so hot, so I took that out by adding on that piece of paper. Maybe I'll go back and do that again. I just added in an extra page that says video ideas because a lot of the times I jot the stuff down on random pieces of paper or in my phone, and I'd rather just have it all in one place. also be nice to have a page where I can talk about things that I want to buy for myself and also things that I want to learn. Moving on, I also drew a gift giving guide page and I think that this was just helpful so that way throughout the year as people's birthdays or different occasions come up and I need to get them a gift, I have a sense of what kind of things that they like and that way I can get them a good gift. I used to really pride myself on giving really, really great gifts, but I feel like in more recent years, I'm not as good at it as I used to be. Maybe because there has just been so much going on in my life that I don't always get to keep track of such things. And back then, I used to actually have a bullet journal, so maybe that's why. I also made this gratitude page to have a place to write down all my thoughts and the things that I'm grateful for because in the past when I've tried to do this monthly, it doesn't always work out because I feel very obligated and guilty if I don't fill in every single line for every single day for what I'm grateful for because I know I have so much to be grateful for. It's very, very wonderful the kind of things that I have in my life, but I think it would be nice to just have it all in one place so that way I can fill it in at my leisure because your bullet journal really shouldn't make you feel guilty and also that way I can look at everything at once. So I saw this idea in somebody's bullet journal video at some point to make a self-care bingo. I think that person said that they found it from Pinterest. So I made this self-care bingo as a way for me to kind of get a sense of what sort of things that I should be doing if I don't feel so hot because everybody has those days as Hannah Montana said. So I drew in all these doodles of the kinds of things that I wanted to draw over. The different things that I have are things like watching a movie or a comfort TV show, drinking some water, playing a game, eating something, taking a nap, singing, uh, reading a book physically rather than just by audiobook because sometimes that's not really that helpful in calming any kind of anxiety. I also have a face mask and I drew some clothes over on the left for the idea of dressing up. I have to take a hot shower, treat myself to a bubble tea, and then I drew a phone and I crossed it out as a way of saying unplug from your phone because sometimes that is really, really helpful in helping out any kind of anxiety or pain that you're dealing with. Then I added in a picture of a cat, which is supposed to be my cat, take a walk, listen to music, which usually always lifts my spirits. This has a picture of some knitting needles, but the idea is just to create something because a lot of the times just by creating, I am getting some more energy out there and getting my mind off other things. Then I drew some broccoli as a way of saying eating something healthy, then exercising. There is also talking on the phone with a friend, and the last one is to just spend some quality time with somebody. 
I thought that the self-care bingo would be a really cute way of just reminding myself of different things that I can do. It's really hard to remember the things that make you happy if you're feeling very anhedonic, and sometimes your body is just asking you to feed it, or water it, or move it, and that's the sort of things that I need to remember sometimes when I'm in that funk. On the right side, I made this tags page, and it was basically a way for me to keep track of all of the different tags that I still need to do for booktube, because I have been tagged so many times, and I'm just not amazing at doing my tags. So I think once I actually do the tag, I will probably color in each of these. And don't worry, I did not write all of these in, so if you're wondering, where is that thing that I tagged you in? It's here in my brain, I just didn't write it yet. Okay, so here comes the interesting part. I thought it would be really fun to print out all of these different pictures of books I wanted to read. We just got a new color printer and it actually works for once. I had a really hard time narrowing down exactly which books I wanted to prioritize in each genre that I needed to look at. And because I have goals like reading more nonfiction, or reading more middle grade, or finishing the series that I've started, I found it really hard to actually just pick like 21 books for 2021 or anything like that. So instead, I just actually cut out all of these different ones. I spent a little bit of time thinking about how I wanted to organize them, and then I made some envelopes. So I just took some old magazines that we weren't going to use anymore, and I turned them into envelopes. I am actually going to show you how I did that using this envelope maker that I have. There's a little chart, and it tells you which size you need to cut each of these envelopes to. So I made a 5x5 five five piece of paper, and then using this envelope maker, I just punched everything out. I'm sorry this is not really so helpful if you don't have one of these, but this was the way that I made each of these, and then I put all of the books inside of there so that way I could keep track of them. And then I was struck by a genius idea to kind of make these little sleeves so that way I could pull the envelopes in and out because I thought that the front and the back of the envelopes were so cute that I didn't really want to hide them and glue them to the page. And I also thought it would be a little bit annoying if I had to reach in and pull out a book rather than actually be able to hold the envelope in my hand. So what I did was I took some washi tape and I took a smaller piece and I taped it sticky side to the sticky side of the longer piece. And then I taped that all the way down on the piece of paper so that way I was able to basically create a sleeve that would not stick to the envelope but that I could pull the envelope in and out whenever I wanted to. I did end up actually having to tape those down later so that way they would stick. And then I made these little titles out of paper and I just colored with some black Pigma pens and then I wrote the names of each of what the envelopes hold on each of those and taped them in. So I wanted to make different envelopes for standalones I want to get to, series, nonfiction, and book crushes. Book crushes are basically books that I have been really meaning to read for the longest time, I've heard amazing things about, I am very 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 interested in each of them. Moving on, I have a spread for all the book clubs that I'm in. I am part of two book clubs consistently meeting every single month, which are the Winers Book Club and the Host Club Book Club. The Winers tends to just rotate every host, picking out which books we want to read, but there aren't really any particular standards to which books from which genres. It's just anything that we want to read that time, including backlist and new books. For January, we were reading Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I had a lot of thoughts about that, which you can definitely check out if you'd like. I'll leave that live show in the description down below, but I didn't like that book. On the right side, I have the Host Club, a manga book club, in which every host will pick three popular manga and one not popular manga. And for that, we were reading Overlord volumes one through three and one volume of Planets. I also really didn't like Overlord either. And if you really want to hear that tea, I will also link that. The last spread that I have in here is the Happiness Project spread. There is a book I have always been wanting to read and implement in my life called The Happiness Project by Gretchen and Rubin, and every single month there are different things that Gretchen focused in on, and this is really less of a self-help book and more of a way for her to try to make herself happier because while she wasn't particularly unhappy, she didn't think she was living the most full life. I just wanted to add, I never really noticed this before, but the second half of the year spells out Jason D, as in Jason Derulo. I did add a little Irulo in there, but I did erase it before I showed this overall spread for you. where I show you all the different spreads that I made. I haven't really been using my bullet journal for a very long time last year because 
pandemic, but I think it's really nice to actually get back into the groove of things and it'll help me to plan out my life a little bit more instead of just resorting to all those scraps of paper. This bullet journal video is coming to you in February, but it doesn't mean that it's too late for you to start yours either. And maybe that's just what I'm proving to you and not just me being super duper late all the time. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me today for my 2021 bullet journal setup video. I hope that this was helpful for you. If there are any other additional spreads here that you want to add to yours, let me know. Or if you've already set up your bullet journal and you have a video of that, I'd also love to see it if you link it down below because I love watching bullet journal setup videos. It is just really fun and very calming for me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'll have more bullet journal videos coming your way soon, but in the meantime, hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Rachel, this is Let Me in the Library, and I'll see you next time. Bye.